Hello, everyone. This is Akata West. Thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to talk about April as the most important month in 2024. Not only we have on the 8th of April, Aries, new moon solar eclipse. We are also during a period of Mercury retrograde. And we will have Karen Kasimi that we have talked so many times already and Mars is going to conjunct Saturn and Venus conjunct with Mercury in Aries as well. But today I would really like to bring our attention to an asteroid, Lilith, the Black Moon Lilith. As most of my clients know that I am a big fan in studying asteroids because I think they really reflect our psyche, our emotion in a much deeper levels. And on the 8th of April, Lilith is going opposite to Saturn and Mars in Pisces. And I think that she is showing us something more profound but before we go going to talk about everything in details, I would like to give us a few key words of this period. It is a period of anticipation with delay. Also a period of rebirth and restoration. While we might feel the discomfort, it invites us to feel our karma, our pain deeply. By going through this darkness, we may find surprise at the end of the tunnel when Jupiter and Uranus conjunct on the 20th, 20th of the 21st of April, depend on which part of the world that you are in. So, let's begin. Thank you. Before we talk about the 8th April Aries solar eclipse, we should look at Mercury retrograde first. It starts its retrograde period from the 1st of April to the 25th. When Mercury appears to move backward in the sky, tag and communication glitches ensure, occurring in the interpret signs of Aries, it is easier than ever to make mistakes when we rush, distracts, delays, all pinpoint of areas in our life that need a system upgrade. When it starts its retrograde period, it is actually the April's full stay. So <laughs> there might be some surprises, a sense of humor is the best insurance policy as Mercury gets up to its usual tricks and pranks. And of course, when Mercury goes retrograde, it tends to correspond with delays, lost mail, or malfunctioning devices. But sometimes it is a good invitation to, for us to pause and to go into this interceptive mood when we are considering to take an action or a decision to think it more profoundly before jumping off the cliffs. Even though slowing down isn't always the ram's first instinct, it is certainly a good practice, especially during this period where we have also North Node and Chiron in the same sign. There is always ways to flow with this transit and rather be being frustrated and worry about what's come next. Take a few deep breaths and willingly to reframe 
rewired, reassessed, reevaluate whatever that we are doing in our real life. It is an invitation for us to interrogate the areas theory impulses and to bring more discernment to our life passions, creations, and spiritual path. We will have more energy for the undertakings that truly fuel our fire, and the wisdom to release what is merely an impulse. And here, I will stress once again: and if we can delay or postpone the period. Of taking actions or making any important decisions in our life, until the end of April, after twenty fifth of April, if there is any possibilities, I highly invite you to do that. And this brings us to the solar eclipse on the eighth of April. Eclipses can bring a frenetic pace and unexpected turns, so give yourself ample time and room to finish tasks around this date in particular. If you might take a rest, reflections, or even nap, give time to process everything that is surfacing. And avoid rash decisions. The agency cracking in the air is best observed rather than act upon. As Mercury, I always consider the messengers of God. I would like to invite you to listen carefully of divine messages that arrive. To in your way and reflection and rest is your writer's alias, sleeping on it as I ace up your sleeves. For every fiery flash of inspiration, spend time reinforcing the wellness that will nurture this flame. The gift. Of Mercury backtracking in Aries is an initiative to start afresh when something isn't working. If anyone can return to the drawing board with gusto, that would be Aries. And just a few days later, on the tenth or eleventh of April, we will have Mercury. Conjunct the sun, and this is an auspicious casimi. Going inward will bring revelations about everything that eclipse seasons dislodged, big endings from the Libra full moon eclipse on the twenty fifth of March, and the beginnings with this April. Solar eclipse will sharpen into focus on this day, so there will be no rush to act. Stay alert for any messages from the divine that may arrive in dreams, synchronicities, bodily reactions, or sudden flashes of insight. This casimi. Can be a light bulb moment, that highlighting the revelations that this transit is trying to impart. There is a lot of twists and turns with the other sign, and we are going to talk about that now one by one. We have talked about the Chiron and Novno conjunct since February. And in this Mercury retrograde period, he is making three times conjunct 
with Kyron on the 15th of、uh, April. And when it moved forward also on the 6th of May. Here, once again, I think it's a, a good practice if you can keep a journal s or taking notes of how these synchronicities and messages may come your way and to go really within. To practice being your own best friend. On the 19th of April, Mercury is meeting up with Venus. Okay, even Venus in Aries is considered a detriment. That is not the best sign for Venus. That its expression of love and beauty challenges by the fierce Aries energy. Freedom, independence are not qualities that associate with Venus in, mo- in most of the cases. And this may be a little bit of a joke. My When Venus and Mercury retrogrades conjunct, some people from the past may come up. And, you know, just be careful. Okay? So now let us concentrate a little bit on the 8th of April, the solar eclipse in Aries. The solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun. Blocking all or part of the sunlight. And I think this solar eclipse does the opposite. It is lighting up a new path forward and kick starting a new cycle. After we have closed the cycle on the 25th of March during the Libra lunar eclipse. And here we will have the sun and moon sit at 19 degrees of Aries, alongside with a stellium of planets that concentrate in Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. I invite you to have a look at your birth chart. Where are those signs sit? Where are the houses? And that Is going to be the major influence since February until late June and even longer period in today's life. So, have a check on that. And、um, if, you ha- if you have any questions, of course, you are welcome to contact me in becominglotus.org. One interesting fact in year 2005, we had the exact degree of solar eclipse in Aries on the same day. Just a few days on the 2nd of April, before the eclipse t- taken place, Pope. John Paul II died, and as eclipse is very much、um, connected with important figures, father figures, politicians, elite, and important persons in entertainment industry. Now, I don't want to go into politics and I don't want to talk about politics. During these days, we may have some revelation of some important figures in political, in entertainment, or even the court, the royal court. And、um, let's see if there is something that might happen during those days. Or within the six months of this eclipse influence. 
As I said before, this eclipse is very much reflective of our current global affairs and I think it seems to more involved in a collective level, especially um, with North Node here, some karmic points represent forward movement and the future. Very interestingly, I think many of you have heard about it. This eclipse will be visible across Mexico, United States, and a small part in Canada. It is already being referred to as the Great North American Eclipse. And um, with last year, we have Pluto return for the USA in September to November, Pluto is going back to Capricorn, which is still among the six month eclipse energies. On that day, we have eight city that is called Nineveh in the US. Two of them is on the path of solar eclipse. They are in Ohio and Indiana. Meanwhile, the, the other six is within its um, route. They, it go past uh, Missouri, it go past New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, Virginia, and Illinois. But the real story of Nineveh in the Bible is primarily found in the book of Jonah. Nineveh was the capital of the ancient Assyrian Empire, known for its strength and weakness. So God commands Jonah to go to the Nineveh and preach against its weakness, warning of its destruction. And the king and the citizens repent, and God regret his plan and spare the city to the disappointment of Jonah. However, the destruction eventually come at around 612 BC, when a coalition of its enemies, including the Babylonians, besieged and sacked the city, and this marked the end of the Assyrian Empire. After this eclipse, we will st now start to look at other aspects that I think is important. Please follow through. First of all, we should talk about the Chiron Kasimi. And once again, this is an invitation of healing of our individuals and hence influence the mass consciousness. As Chiron has been in Aries since the 17th of February in 2019 and he will stay here until 18th of September in 2026. We have already talked about the long residence of Chiron in Aries. And I think with this Kasimi, it is once again invite us to heal deep within our individuals, our self-identity, finding our own place in our world healing the deepest wound, fear, and shadows that we might have not been able to confront, to embrace. And only through this deep healing, we can bring out the sun, our sun, our soul, 
our sole purpose in this lifetime. Of course, the movement to conjunction with the North Node already has paved us into this process. And now we will have a look at Jupiter and Uranus conjunction on the twentieth of April. Um, first of all, we should look at what they represent. Jupiter represent expansion, and Uranus represent breakthrough. Something that is unconventional, and could be sort of like unexpected outcome. And I think Jupiter expands anything it touches. When it conjunct with Uranus, that breaks the mold and bring a revolutionary changes. This combination could bring interesting changes in our world. Especially, look at your birth chart. Where Taurus stay, the house that is sitting. As Taurus is associated with. Idea of comfort, with materialistic things, with wealth and security. It、um, can we can assume that will bring certain kind of breakthrough in the realm of material possessions. In a way that I think this conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter will shattered Taurus. Normal expectation, it ground forcing this Taurus, this bull, to adapt a new way of being. And as Uranus is very erratic, especially in um in a personal level, we don't know what we don't know. Expect the unexpected in a positive. Sense with Jupiter right next to us, and somehow I would invite us not to make too fast um、uh, evaluations or a conclusions of what might happen, and with an important transit like that. We can only see the result, and we be able to discern what is actually bringing us after a period of considerations. And also, if we considered it is still during Mercury retrograde period until the twenty fifth, so whatever happened during this period. As in the solar eclipse, I invite us to be really sit back, to consider, re-evaluate, to assess whatever that is happening with introspection, with calmness, and don't take, don't be too assertive, don't be too. Fears in making a decisions. Stay calm, okay. Now come to the last point that I would really like to bring our attentions to. We have Mars conjunct Saturn in Pisces, and it is inching closer, closer. After the the eighth of April eclipse, and this conjunction is opposite Lilith in Virgo. If we consider Chiron as the masculine aspect of healing, and I also consider Lilith as the feminine side. Is it necessary of healing? But 
I think Lilith invites us to look deep within the shadow side, the the dark side of our psyche, of our emotions, and、um, with these oppositions, is really bringing out her essence to go against, to sort of putting emphasis. Of what we need to do in order to heal our karma with Saturn as the Lord of Karma, and we cannot, as Saturn, is a、um, way of asking us to do the deep inner work. When we do our work diligently, we get our compensation. And Saturn and Mars here together in this conjunction is helping us to build a new paradigm, a new environment, a new boundaries for the future that we are hoping to build for us. So now we will take a look. At the archetype of Lilith, Lilith, she has many stories, and I think her mythology starts in the Mesopotamia. In whatever whatever cultures she is being、um, adapted. There is one common theme that she has been always portrayed and associated with the symbol of both danger and sacredness. In my exoteric study, she is referred to the untamed, fiery first wife of Adam when she refused. Mm, the submersiveness to 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 put herself under、um, Adam. She was being banished from Eden as a consequences. In whatever cultures that we are talking about Lilith, and she is regarded as Iggy, the dark symbol of feminisms. A night marriage figures that believed to harm newborns or pregnant women.、Um, that she feasts on st- stolen children. Many of the medieval art she is depicted with wild, disheveled hair, with wings and clotted feet. Scratching like a bird throughout the night, and she represents the concealed and chaotic aspect of the divine, in contrast to the more nurturing aspect of the feminine. And in some interpretations, she is also associated with sexuality. In particular, sexual promiscuity, that further adding to her complex and multifaceted portrayal. But then again, her symbolism continues to be a source of fascination and exploration, evoking discussions about gender dynamics and the complexities of myth and folklore. I personally, that resonate very well with her as an independence and refusal to conform to societal norms, and I think she is admirable. Let us look at what Lilith is in astrology for a second. There is three distinct Lilith 
that we talk about as asteroid lily, as black moon lily, and as dark moon lily. The black moon lily is the most widely used astrological representation. It is not a physical object, but rather a point in space representing the moon father's point from Earth. While asteroid Lilith is a solid representation of Lilith situated within the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And we have now the dark moon Lilith. She is not a tangible entity, nor a rarefied celestial position. And instead, it is a captivating hypnosis suggesting the existence of a second, mysterious, sphere-shaped dust cloud orbiting Earth. When I look at my client's chart, I always pay special attention where Lilith sits in their chart, in which house. And I think she represents really the, the unconscious, the deepest fear in a person. What kind of shadows she needs to face. Sometimes because it is in our unconscious, subconscious mind, we didn't even realize that some kind of phobia or, 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 or fears that we have that we cannot really touch on. And I think Lilith really shine a light in that. And as a consequence, I think with her mythology, Regardless that she has gone through this um, explosion from Eden, but she is someone that know her self identity, know who she was, and she wouldn't subject herself. Be submersive to, to Adam's request. And I think ultimately, what she represents in our natal chart, when we are ready to face this deepest fear in us, it is also encouraging us in which area in our life we need to stand up for who we are, for what we represent, our self-identity. And during this period, with the nodal's point in Aries and Libra, it is so significant that Aries representing the I am and Libra represent our relationship with the others as we are and and Lilith is here inviting us to not only healing with Chiron in the self identities area but look deep where after our healing how you should stand your ground, your boundaries, know your worth. And I highly invite you to look at where Lilith is in your birth chart. As I think she is also the mirror of a powerful figures as she revealing the deepest 
of our psyche, of our emotion, shedding a light on even our self-destructive tendencies that may bring chaos or upheaval. But healing, the healing process is messy. It's not fun. It's not peaceful. There is no, not much joy in it. It is painful, and it takes a lot of courage. And Lily has it. She has courage. So, to conclude, that. Ever since 2024, we are entering of these deep healing energies, and with Chiron conjunct the North Node with the with the nodal axis entered Aries and Libra, and now we have we looked at Lilith. That is some profound work. And I send my heart to yours for any assistance, any clarifications, and if you need a personal reading, please visit my website, becominglotus.org. And I thank you for listening and watching. Bye.